Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J Man Time and today I have another video on five Italian weapons that should have been used or that should have been manufactured during the Second World War. And in this video we're going to go over five Italian artillery systems that should have been manufactured in large numbers and should have been at least the standard issued equipment on some battlefields during the Second World War especially during the fighting in North Africa, which was the most important battlefield for the Italian forces during the Second World War. During World War II, the Italians lost a large number of their battles due to the fact that most of their artillery was either antiquated or underperformed its task when compared to the Allied artillery they were facing during the fighting in North Africa, but also during the fighting in Greece and Yugoslavia. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the artillery systems that could have been, or in some cases should have been, mass-produced as either standard-issued artillery systems, or at least as secondary equipment for the Italian forces in the Second World War. And the first weapon system on the list, or artillery system on the list, is the Italian Fiat Spa TL-37, or Model 37, which was a limited production wheeled assault gun or wheeled artillery piece that was converted in 1940-1941. Now this weapon system was actually developed in Libya by the Fiat company based in Tripoli and it was a conversion of a previously existing Italian artillery tractor known as the Fiat SPA TL Model 1937, which was the standard Italian artillery tractor or artillery towing system used by the Italian forces during the fighting in North Africa. The main armament of this vehicle was 175mm Italian Cannon Di 75-27 Model 1911, which is actually an old artillery piece, but this was a more modern manufactured version. It was a standard Italian-issued artillery piece that was actually used in the First World War in its original form, but they also continued production of this weapon system all the way up until the early 1930s. The 75mm gun on this vehicle had an armor penetration of 35 to 50 millimeters at 1,000 yards, meaning it was useful against most of the early British armored fighting vehicles used from 1939 until 1941. This vehicle had 4 millimeters of armor over vital areas, and it had a speed of 38 kilometers per hour, or 23.6 miles per hour. And it had a crew of 6, and only 20 to 30 of these vehicles were produced for the Italian army based in Tripoli. This vehicle was actually built for the Italian Colonial 12 Auto Group, which was part of the Italian colonial forces based in the Tripoli region of Libya, and throughout Libya as a whole. Later on, these vehicles were given to the 136th Armored Division, Giovanni Division, later on in 1941-1942, in which they were later used during the fighting in Tunisia between 1942 and 1943, which was the final phase of the fighting in North Africa. Now, this is a wheeled assault gun, and this is the kind of weapon system the Italians actually needed in North Africa, as most of the fighting in North Africa occurred in open terrain, in open, in open desert valleys and gullies, in Libya, Tunisia, and also in Eritrea, Ethiopia, in Italian Somaliland. Most of the Italian artillery was towed artillery, and as a result, the Italians mostly relied on horse-drawn artillery, pretty much like the Germans and most of the other Axis powers. But if they had a wheeled artillery vehicle like this, it would have made fighting in North Africa much easier, and this vehicle here had a 75mm gun that could penetrate upwards to 50 millimeters of armor at 1,000 yards. This vehicle would have been even more useful during the fighting in Ethiopia and Eritrea and Somaliland, where Italian colonial troops in that region barely had any armored fighting vehicles, let alone any wheeled um, assault guns like this vehicle. So this was a wasted opportunity for the Italians, as they had more than 900 artillery tractors that could have been converted into this configuration. This was one of the vehicles the Italians could have mass-produced during the early stages of World War II. The next system on the list is the Ansaldo Obese 210-22, and this was a limited production heavy field howitzer 
howitzer that was developed in 1935 and actually entered production in 1937. This weapon system was a heavy towed artillery system that could have been towed by the average heavy duty artillery transport vehicle or even supply truck used by the Italian forces. This weapon was chambered for the 210 millimeter round and each round weighed about 101 kilograms or 223 pounds per shell. The maximum firing range on this gun was 15,400 meters or 16,800 yards and it was crewed by either six to eight men. This weapon system was only produced in very small numbers and that's because it was only produced produced by one factory. As a result, only 20 to 34 guns were produced between 1935 and 1943, which is a very low number for a weapon system of this kind. Keep in mind, most of the Italian howitzer systems used in World War II were just World War I era artillery pieces that were still being used because the Italians simply couldn't keep up with the production of weapons they needed like this and were stuck with using older artillery systems. As a result, their artillery guns were anywhere from 20 to 40 years out of date when compared to what the Americans and the British were using during the fighting in North Africa, the fighting in Greece, and later on during the Allied invasion of Italy itself in 1943. But if the Italians had had a gun like this, as a standard issued heavy artillery piece, they would have been able to at least hold off the Allies and drawing some of the key battles that occurred in World War II on the Italian front. For example, the fighting in Greece, where most Italian units were armed with light 75mm guns, or drawing the fighting in Libya and Tunisia, and later on the fighting in Egypt, in which the Italians were actually winning at first. But again, they were using outdated weapons, and the British later managed to rebound against them by 1942. And if they had more modern, heavy artillery like this, they could have defeated the British in many of the battles, especially during the artillery duels between both the Axis and Allied forces. Another example would be the Siege of Tobruk in 1941. During that battle, both the Italians and the Germans actually had the British and Australians surrounded in the city of Tobruk. But eventually the Allies managed to break through. And the main reason, again, is because most of the Italian artillery was outdated and the Italians were quickly overrun on their front. If they had a gun like this, they would have been able to send a shock to the Allies with a weapon that was powerful enough to take out most fortifications and was mobile enough to be transported to most of the battlefields involving the Italian forces during the fighting in North Africa. But again, only 20 to 34 guns were built and eight of those were later sold to Hungary in 1941, which was a bad move because the Italians badly needed a system like this and they could not afford to give away the guns they did have. But this weapon here, the Ansaldo Obis 210-22, was another, another wasted opportunity for the Italians to manufacture a more modern heavy artillery system, or in this case, a heavy howitzer for the Italian army. During the fighting in North Africa between 1940 and 1943, the Italians would actually use a large number of heavy gun trucks, and these gun trucks acted as both anti-tank, anti-aircraft, and as artillery support vehicles for the Italian ground forces. So this was kind of Italy's first attempt at trying to mechanize their artillery units within the Italian army by fitting these artillery guns to existing supply trucks, turning them into large gun trucks. And one of the best gun trucks used during the fighting in North Africa was the Italian Fiat 634N Auto Canoni which was a heavy-duty mobile anti-tank, anti-aircraft, and artillery truck, artillery gun truck, developed in 1941, again in the same Fiat plant based in Tripoli as the same Fiat plant that produced the first vehicle on the list, the Fiat SPA TL-37. This weapon system here was armed with one, the 101.6 millimeter cannon die, 102-35 Schneider and Saldo dual-purpose anti-tank, anti-aircraft gun and field gun, which was developed originally in 1914. Originally, these guns were developed for Italian light cruisers during the First World War, but during the interwar years, they were modernized and converted into anti-aircraft guns and coastal defense guns once those original ships had been sold for scrap. So the guns were actually modernized and they were given fixed ammunition 
instead of the old bag and shell ammunition that you would have seen in the First World War. These vehicles, these gun trucks, had a speed of about 41 kilometers per hour or 25.4 miles per hour, and they had a crew of eight, but only seven, only seven, only seven of these Fiat 634N auto canonies were built in Libya. But they were very good for their small numbers. During the Battle of Gobi in November 1941, a single one of these vehicles managed to knock out 15 British tanks in the span of one hour before itself was taken out, either by British ground forces or by British air support. So just one vehicle was able to take out 15 tanks in one go. Imagine if the Italians had produced these vehicles as standard issue. Let's say if they produced about 500 or so. They had enough trucks to do it. They had more than 6,000 of these Fiat trucks to convert into these large self-propelled gun systems. But ultimately, the Italians did take this design seriously, and after 1941, this particular vehicle concept was pretty much abandoned in favor of the smaller gun trucks mounting either 65 or 75 millimeter artillery systems. So this vehicle here could have been a monster on the battlefield. A single round from this 102 millimeter gun could penetrate more than 200 millimeters of armor at ranges of upwards to 1,500 to 2,000 yards, meaning this artillery system could outgun the Tiger tank that the Germans were using on the Axis side also. But the Italians didn't take it seriously, and this heavy-duty gun truck, all-purpose gun truck, was basically abandoned. The next artillery system that could have been useful in World War II was a dual-purpose anti-tank gun that was developed between 1932 and 1937. And the Italians badly needed an anti-tank gun that could deal with the more modern medium tanks that were being built by the U.S. forces later on in 1942, like the American M3 Grant and later on the M4 Sherman, as the 47mm gun was good at close range or point-blank range, but was pretty garbage beyond, let's say, 200 to 400 yards. And the next gun on the list could have replaced that gun if the Italians had mass-produced it in any large numbers. And that gun is the Ansaldo Canon 75-32 Model 1937. And this was actually a dual-purpose anti-tank and field artillery gun that was derived from another gun that was basically the same gun, but from 1932. And that was the Canadar 75-32. Now the original gun was made as a field artillery piece. And this gun and another gun known as the Model 1934 were designed as anti-tank weapons but could also be used as field artillery also. Canadar 75-18 Howitzer, which was one of the standard howitzers, light howitzers that was already in use with the Italian army since at least the 1920s. Now this gun here had the same ammunition, but the Italians had developed some special anti-tank shells. They even came up with a hollow charge shell for dealing with more modern Allied tanks post-1942. Because later on, even this gun was starting to get outclassed by some of the heavier armored British and American tanks. So the Italians actually came up with a hollow charge shell that pretty much gave this anti-tank gun the, the armor penetration of a Panzerfaust. The armor penetration with the standard anti-tank shells was 56 millimeters at ranges of between 500 and 1,000 yards. But the shape charge shell had an even higher armor penetration of at least 60 to 70 millimeters. The maximum firing range of this gun was 12.5 kilometers or 13,700 yards, and this gun was crewed by a crew of at least three to four. The main problem, again, was the Italians didn't take this gun too seriously, and only 172 of these guns were ever produced from 1937 through 1943. So the Italians had nearly a decade, really, to mass produce this gun, and they only managed to get 172 off the assembly line. And to keep in mind, 100 of that 172, 100 of those guns, were later used as the main armament of one of the Italian medium tank projects known as the P-26-40, which was an Italian medium tank project developed between 1941 and 1943. So the Italian army only received a mere 72 of these guns during the fighting in North Africa and later on during the invasion of Italy itself between 1940 and 1943. 
And this gun here is what they needed throughout the entire North Africa campaign. They needed a light 75mm gun that could deal with most of the Allied tanks that were being used. British cruiser tanks and American medium tanks that were entering service between 1940 and 1942. The Italians didn't take it too seriously and only 72 guns ever made it to the front lines during the Second World War. Another wasted opportunity. And finally, the gun that the Italians needed the most. The only gun the Italians developed, the only artillery piece that the Italians developed that even the Germans were impressed by, and that is the Ansaldo Cannondale 90-53, which was a dual-purpose anti-tank, anti-aircraft, and general-purpose artillery field gun from 1939. This weapon here was chambered for the 90 by 679 millimeter rim shell and had a massive armor penetration of between 62 and 206 millimeters at ranges of 500 to 2,000 yards. So basically, it could take out any Allied tank developed at any point during World War II. Even the later American M26 Pershing would be no problem for this gun. This gun here was pretty much the Italian equivalent of the German 88mm anti-tank and anti-aircraft gun. This gun had a maximum firing range of 11,000 to 7,000 meters or 39,000 feet so it could deal with enemy aircraft, meaning it could take out pretty much most of the British and American heavy bombers that were flying over Italy between 1941 and 1943. This weapon had a crew of eight, but again, only a small number of these guns were ever produced. From 1939 to 1943, the Italians only produced some 539 guns, and most of these were given to the Italian Navy as anti-aircraft weapons on board Italian warships, mostly cruisers and destroyers and auxiliary cruisers. The Italians also had purpose-built anti-aircraft cruisers that were armed with this gun also. And only a mere 48 to 68 of these guns were actually given to the Italian ground army to be used as either anti-aircraft artillery or to be used as anti-tank artillery within various Italian sub-propelled guns. This included sub-propelled tanks, tank destroyers, and also some heavy gun trucks, like the ones I'm about to mention next. Not only was this gun good as a single anti-tank weapon or as a single artillery piece, it was also useful as a vehicle-mounted artillery weapon. The Italians had actually developed some purpose-built armored fighting vehicles that they were made to use this weapon as their primary armament. Some of these vehicles were as powerful as the German Tiger tank in terms of their stopping power and ability to knock out virtually almost all Allied tanks they would come in contact with if they ever got a chance to face any Allied tanks. So let's go over some of the vehicles that were mounted with this Ansaldo Cannondar 90-53. And the first vehicle on the list is the Simaventi Rotato da 90 slash 53 Breeder 501. And this was actually an experimental wheeled assault gun slash tank destroyer that was actually developed in 1939. So technically, this was the second Italian tank destroyer ever developed. The first Italian tank destroyer was actually developed in 1937. But this was the first wheeled tank destroyer ever developed by the Italians in the years before World War II. This vehicle system was developed just before the war began in 1939. The main armament, as you already know, is the 90mm Cannon-9053 Mod 1939, but it was also armed with a machine gun. The armor thickness of this vehicle was 8 to 30 millimeters, and it had a speed of 78 kilometers per hour, or 48 miles per hour, and it had a crew of 2 to 6. Now this here was pretty much a wheeled equivalent of the German Tiger tank. It was a tank destroyer armed with a 90mm gun, and it could pretty much take out any Allied tank, especially in 1939-1940, and any, any Allied tank developed afterwards. Only two vehicles were ever produced, only two prototypes were ever produced, and the project was pretty much abandoned by 1940. If the Italians had taken this vehicle seriously, they would have had no problems dealing with the British in North Africa, or in Greece, for that matter. If they had this vehicle, 
They would not have had any problems dealing with British tanks or armored cars during the fighting in Greece. They wouldn't have had any problems dealing with British or even American armored fighting vehicles during the fighting in North Africa. A single round from the 90mm gun would do away with any British or American tank on that battlefield. But unfortunately, again, the Italians didn't take this vehicle concept seriously, just like they really didn't take the gun that was mounted on this vehicle that seriously either. Another system that used the Canon 90-53 breeder was the Auto Canon 90-53. And this was actually a series of limited production gun trucks, heavy duty gun trucks, just like the other one on this list, that doubled as both anti-tank, anti-aircraft, and general purpose artillery gun trucks, and these were developed between 1939 and 1940. What the Italians did is they took the standard 90mm prototype dual-purpose gun, prototype dual-purpose gun, and they fitted them to either Breda or Breda 53 heavy supply trucks, or Lancia 3RO heavy supply trucks, or heavy utility trucks, that were already being used by the Italian army at that point. These vehicles had a speed of either 45 kilometers per hour or 27.8 miles per hour for the Lancia, or 60 kilometers per hour or 37.2 miles per hour for the Breda 52 utility truck. And these were either 4x4 or 6x4 dual purpose mobile anti-tank, anti-aircraft, and general purpose artillery gun trucks that were developed between 1939 and 1940-1941. Now, the Italians actually did use some of these vehicles. 120 of these gun trucks were actually deployed to North Africa in small numbers, and some were also used during the fighting in Italy itself, when the Americans and the British came in 1943. So the Italians actually did use this gun truck to a limited extent, but if they wanted to defeat the Americans and the British, they were going to have to produce this system by the hundreds. And unfortunately, the Italians simply did not have the resources, especially not after 1942, to manufacture this vehicle or this cannon, this artillery piece, in any large numbers as they were running low on resources, especially after they lost all of their territory in North Africa. And so there you have it. These were the five rare Italian artillery systems that were actually needed during the Second World War. And they were used to a limited extent with only a few dozen models, or in the case of the last one, a hundred or so models being made. But ultimately, it wasn't enough to win the war. If the Italians wanted to win World War II, they would have to produce all of these systems in the hundreds or even the thousands if they wanted to face the endless war machine of the United States and the British Empire during the Second World War. So which one of these were your favorite? My favorite would be the Fiat Model 634N Auto Canoni gun truck as there's something that could easily be produced since it was just an old 102mm uh, gun fitted to a infantry supply truck. But which of these were your favorite? What do you think of these artillery systems and these artillery support vehicles? Please tell me in the comment section below and until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.